Hello everybody, welcome to Mr. B Clothing here, 1995 Northwest 86th Street in just gorgeous Clive, Iowa. Chris Williams here, joined by the one and only Tim Sitzman and Austin Arnaud. Do you, is it okay if we let Austin you know, hang out? You know, it's always a pleasure to have an athlete of his his stature stand, uh, sitting next to us, Chris. And he, the knowledge he has and the uh, the skill set that he brought to the game, and it's fun to have him in our store. Well, what you, you do know, to deserve that? No stature. You know, anymore. I'm going to say all that, you, you uh, fanatic fans. But look at these guys dressed. I think at Mr. B's, <laughs> we can show you guys how to dress after you get out of athletics, so that you look like you're going into business. Austin looks great looking guy, you should be in a suit and tie. Well, Hi. what about, what do I send to the golf course after this? Here? <laughs> I think that's where you're going, buddy. I think that's where you're going. You might be right. <laughs> Nonetheless, I know that, uh, I know that you've been working with our boss, Jason, Jason you know. Luch, who, who's got a horse running in the Preakness. We've talked, we talked horse racing before, Tim. Uh, what'd you what'd you what'd you, you put Jason in? He's got to have a nice suit. You know I what? Imagine. You know what? I saw you out of Prairie Meadows. We were having fun one night, and I wish yep. we could have a uh, a big race like that right in Des Moines, where all these folks want to dress up in suits. And you know, when you go to the Preakness, which Jason is going to do, and I wish him luck with Cosetti, the the horse that they're putting on the track. I think they got a outside chance, and uh, I might even put a little wager on that, Chris. But uh, it's fun to dress him up. But you know, you put on some bright ties and some fun colors, and you have fun. The, the, obviously, the Derby really is the accents that, and the rest yeah. of the races, they still dress up and, and uh, look like they know something about themselves, you know. And, and Jason is, is really a sharp dresser, and he, he dresses very well. So what kind of suit uh, is Jason going to be sporting well, on Saturday? Well, ja Jason will probably be sporting a new Copley custom suit that he got from me. We fit it to his, to his body and made it fit right, and he's going to look great. What color? I think he's going to wear a tan one. Tan one, ooh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good spring. Good spring color, good spring and a, with, with a bright, right. some purple ex accents and ties and shirts, and you know that's what you should be wearing today instead of a white golf shirt. But you do this, have the nice a, logo. I'm a I company like, man. I like it. Gotta, I like it. Got to promote the website. Company man. Yeah. Hey, we're going to talk. Um, let's shift gears. Let's do it. I don't think we need to do realignment. Uh, we've talked a lot about that. Uh, there is an article written by Randy Peterson of the Des Moines Register recently about Royce White, that guy. Uh, awesome. I did a deal with uh, Matt Abdul Massey, an assistant coach. He's the guy who brought Royce to Iowa State just last week. And what's interesting to me is when you look across the board at these projections and whatnot. I mean, you, you know, I've heard that he could be a lottery pick, and I've also heard out of the first round. I think he's an interesting prospect as we approach the NBA draft on June 28th. Man, I, I don't know, Austin, I, I guess from what I'm hearing, it's going to come down to interview process. Um, you know, can Royce prove that he is not going to get into trouble? Can he prove that he's serious about basketball? And I think yeah. that's the biggest deal because, you know, when I read quotes from Royce being, he's just being honest because that's yep. what he does. But he says, you know, if basketball doesn't work out, I got all these other hobbies, which right. is great. But I also think that you could maybe poke a hole in that. I mean, what, do you, what do you think about this whole I think scenario? anytime you know you look at Royce and hit in the interview process when he's face to face with a GM or a head coach he's gonna you know he's he's gonna his eyes gonna twinkle and he's good at you know the one-on-one -on -one talking and, and being able to express himself um, but you know the more and more I look at the draft and the teams that are in necessity of someone like Royce I think it's going to be you know those mid to late round teams the teams that are still playing basketball right now yeah. who get a guy like Royce and he just you know he's a second or third guy off the bench and he just brings you know a, a different uh, level of versi versatility to a team that's already good. I think that's the perfect scenario for him though. I mean I think if you put Royce in the NBA and say we expect you to be the man I think that's a problem. But the thing that makes him so good Tim I think if, if I'm an NBA general manager there are not many guys first round caliber coming into the NBA draft who are completely cool with not scoring a point. Royce White is one of the few Probably the only man I've ever covered, high school through up to Iowa State, that legitimately would rather have more assists than points. I, I just think that's a very special it, he's a spe trait. He's a special player, and you know, I, not knowing him personally, like maybe Austin and you do, I look at him from the outside in, and I, I kind of agree, well, not kind of, I tro totally agree with Austin. I think he's late round, first rounder, mm -hmm. or early second rounder, and he's a yeah, great right. pickup for somebody. The way he handles the ball, the way he distributes the ball, there's nobody that can really match up with his size and his speed. And no. And now, I say that in, in the college he proved himself. The NBA, the, the, you know, the funnel gets pretty narrow, and the, the, the quality goes way up to another level. 
And but I still think he's got the skill set to be really, really good in the NBA as a player, as a role player, which is what they do. Yeah. yeah, I just think you know, imagine his passing ability with the team. I know he has a workout with the Miami Heat, according yeah. to Randy's story. Seriously, think about with the, with D Wade, with LeBron, and you've got Royce being the point guard. Yeah, you know, yeah. you got Mario Chalmers already. I understand they have some other pieces, but think about what a guy like that could bring to spread out the floor for well, those guys. I know it's a long shot, but you remember what Kevin Kevin Garnett used to do in the beginning of his career right. in Minnesota. He'd bring the ball to the floor. Ball down. Um, you know, also another long shot, but you know, what's most comparable watching the NBA game and how Royce might tra- and should translate to the game, Chris Webber is a guy that comes to yeah, mind for me. That's a very Although, good you know, he obviously needs to work on his, his mid-range jump shot and, and things of that nature, but Royce really, you know, if you compare him players, I think he's a Chris Webber-esque, has the potential to be a Chris Webber type player in the NBA. I think the point you bring up is can he shoot from the, the that 15, 20 foot range? Mm-hmm. Consistently. Consistently, and will will he fit into the team's long-term scheme of putting him in there when they, they got a weak link if he can't hit that shot? Mm-hmm. Then the ball handling becomes neutralized because it's a different yeah. game out there. And so I think the team that takes him, and I think he will be in a late first round, early second round, will have a, in mind what they want out of him and it's up to him to make that that transition into making that 15 10 to 15 foot jump shot because they're going to force him to do that yeah i'll say this i think he's a first round pick okay i really do i don't think i just think he's too talented to slide into that second round i mean this is a guy who one time i remember, I remember reading about royce when he first signed with iowa state it was like michael jordan's trainer yeah, the guy who said this guy's a can't miss player yeah Again, I think it just comes down to those interviews. So it's going to be interesting. Nonetheless, he's a great story, and he is a definitely he's putting Iowa State on the map. I mean, this could be two out of three drafts where Iowa State has a first-round pick, and I think next year Will Clyburn could be the exact same thing. So you're talking if that happens three out of four years, Iowa State's got a first-round draft pick in basketball. That's a pretty big deal if they, well, if they can it, it do it. It shows the success that they're going to have now and in the future. I mean, they're, they're, building, they're building the program back to where – it was with Johnny Orr. So Tim, what are you uh, what are you doing for the Preakness, man? You're gonna be here. You're gonna you know, go out to Meadows. I, I, you know what? I'd love to be out to Meadows, but the race runs uh, early in the afternoon. What time is it on? on I Saturday? usually late afternoon. Late afternoon. Yeah, yeah and so I'll probably hand you a five dollar bill and see if we can win. And I'll let you uh, go out and bet it for me. No, I'll, if I am out there, I will definitely do that. But I I got a couple other things. But I'm, I'm I know I'll watch the race. Whether, I can't guarantee I'll be yeah, out there. Whether yet. I make a bet or not, I'm cer- <laughs> certainly going to be rooting for. Uh, Cosetti and Jason and Dennis with their horse, and you, uh, you know it's a nice, just like we were doing in the in the uh, Derby, we're re- we're rooting for somebody from Iowa with their horses, and I think they said this morning that it's pretty unusual. I think this is one of the first times in Iowa we've had two horses running, two different horses running in these races. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. pretty substantial. Uh, too for, bad Doolahan's not running on Saturday. Well, I understand you got to get ready for the he Belmont. Needs to, he needs to rest a little bit, and the Belmont's not quite as. It's a lot longer race, which I think he'll be better at. All right. So, well, here we are again, Mr. B. Clothing, 1995 Northwest 86th Street, Clive, Iowa. Thanks to Austin for coming by today. Thanks, as always, to Tim Sitzman, and we will see you soon, everybody. Thanks for watching.